In this video, we'll be doing another extremely high yield topic review for the U.S. Only Step 2 and the U.S. Only Step 3 so that you can increase your score on exam day. If you enjoyed this type of content, please be sure to pop that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. The topic that we will be discussing is the reproductive system. First, we'll start out by talking about the male reproductive system. It will be in a question and answer format, giving you explanations on all the high yield concepts that you need to know and master for exam day. So let's begin. At what age is puberty considered to be delayed if no secondary sexual characteristics are present in boys? age 14 in boys and in girls it would be age 12. another high yield concept to note is that constitutional delay is associated with a delayed bone age on x-ray of the wrist at what age should patients with cryptorchidism be referred for surgery by age six months so early orchiopexy before age one optimizes fertility potential and testicular growth. And some complications of cryptoorchidism include hernias, specifically inguinal hernias, testicular torsion, subfertility, and testicular cancers. What is the initial test of choice for evaluating a testicular mass? a bilateral scrotal ultrasound. And if the ultrasound reveals a solid lesion, further workup with serum tumor markers such as alpha fetal protein and beta ACG are required, as well as screening with CT scans. Patients with a solid testicular mass have to undergo a radical inguinal orchiectomy to establish a tissue diagnosis. And if the mass is found to be cancerous, then what the treatment would be is a radical orchiectomy plus chemotherapy. Knowing testicular diseases is extremely high yield for the USMLE Step 2 and the USMLE Step 3. And one such condition is infectious epididymal orchitis. And this can be treated with a dose of intramuscular ceftriaxone and 10 days of doxycycline. To diagnose this condition, it can be confirmed with urinalysis and urine testing for Neisseria gonorrhea and chlamydia. What is the management for patients with balanitis? Foreskin hygiene, sitz baths, topical treatments such as antifungals or antibiotics, a diabetes screen for a candida infection without risk factors, for example, diaphragmatitis and recent antibiotic use. So let's just take a step back for a moment. Balanitis is an inflammation of the glans penis and patients typically present with pain, tenderness, or pruritus associated with erythematous lesions on the glands as well. So if you see a clinical vignette and a patient has these symptoms, then you should suspect that they have balanitis and you can manage them with what you see on the slide here. So one of the most common fungal pathogens that can cause this condition is candida. And this should be especially suspected when there is thick white discharge present around the glans penis. And diagnosis can be confirmed by the presence of budding yeast on microscopy. And just to clarify the last point on this slide, so if a patient presents and you think it's a candidal infection because they have the white thick discharge, however, they have no recent antibiotic use, they have um, no history of diaper dermatitis, and then what you can do is also screen for diabetes as well. Okay, let's move on to the next question. What is the best way to assess for testicular injury in a patient with severe scrotal pain and swelling after scrotal trauma? A scrotal ultrasound. 
which reflex is classically absent in testicular torsion? The chromasteric reflex. So recall that a positive chromasteric reflex is when the testes reflexively elevates on stroking of the upper inner thigh. In which age group is prostate cancer screening not recommended? Age less than 55 or older than 70 or with a life expectancy that is less than 10 years. So in those situations, prostate cancer is not recommended. Typically, you can screen for prostate cancer with the PSA and that can be considered in patients ages 55 to 69. What are the benefits of neonatal circumcision? Decreased UTI in the first year of life and decreased risk of penile phimosis, reduced risk of acquiring some STIs and HIV. What is the most frequent complication of TERP? Retrograde ejaculation. How do you manage priapism lasting greater than four hours? Corporeal aspiration followed by irrigation with cold saline. And you can also give intracavernosal injections of an alpha agonist such as phenylephrine. Another high yield concept is that you can diagnose ischemic priapism by confirming it with a blood gas analysis of a corporeal aspirate. The risk of which condition remains increased after orchiopexy? Malignancy. So it's important to note that relative to patients or the population without a history of cryptoarchidism, patients with cryptoarchidism do have an increased risk of malignancy. How does chronic prostatitis present? Well, the patient will more than likely be experiencing dysuria for more than three months, pain in the genitourinal region, and pain during ejaculation. So if you suspect a patient has chronic prostatitis, you can do a urinalysis and culture before and after a prostate massage, and the test usually shows pyuria greater than 20 with no organisms. How do you treat chronic prostatitis or chronic pelvic pain syndrome? Alpha blockers, antibiotics, and anti-inflammatory medications. And to continue learning more about the reproductive system or other preparation for USMLE exams, all you have to do is click this video right here.